Um, two things. We know that water and land use are very intricately tied, water supply and land use. And the question is, do you feel that the uh, Western Municipal Water District does a good job coordinating with the land use agencies out there? And secondly, do you believe that development should be restricted due to our lack of water or water supply driven? And I'd like to go with Mr. Howe first, please. Well, I'm interested that the Western Group is working with uh, with W.R. Cog because as a uh, as an advocate of more attention to people in non-cities, uh, that says there's a whole bunch of people who aren't represented because in my role as the Riverside County United Communities Group, there. This is all the people that don't have a city. And there's lots of us that need to get our point across that inviting more and more building that takes more and more water is not a good plan when we're running out of water. So uh, I believe, as I said to some of you before, I believe in two kinds of people. There's city folks and there are country folks. And I believe the country folks are getting the short end of the deal. That's where the water is not flowing to the orchards. They're all drying up. Sometimes they get plowed under, they just, sometimes they leave them. Uh, I believe it's a difficult, it, 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 people who are city folks tend to think a certain way. Those of us in the country like to see the stars at night, for example. City folks don't even know there are stars in some cases. So it's a matter of attitude and, uh, and interest. So uh, I would like to see more work with Riverside County United Communities and a little less work with WR Cog because then you have a balance across the population of the state. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. Mr. Field, please. Thank you. The uh, first thing, are water and land use tied together, and should they be? I used to argue this issue a great deal with Lois Krieger, who was the first woman chairman of the Metropolitan Water District and uh, was the wife of the senior person in my law firm at the time. Western, uh, Metropolitan took the, took the position that they dealt with water, they didn't deal with land use. It wasn't their job to do planning about people, and that attitude has been pervasive in Metropolitan's treatment of all their water uh, transportation uh, activities. To me, I thought that was a terrible mistake, uh, because if you just supply water willy-nilly, it, 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 uh, you, you give people the idea that the water is going to be available permanently in any amount that's, that's necessary for development, that's going to lead to horrible planning. I still feel that way. I think that uh, we ought to have closer coordination with respect to uh, water availability. And we are now in a situation where we are asked for will serve letters for major developments. That is to say, we're asked if we'll commit that Western has sufficient water to, to uh, supply whatever development or business entity they're talking about. Um, there are legal ramifications from saying no and ramifications of enormous consequence for the business community. We are getting to the point, however, and I think it's, is it Eastern has already at one, on one occasion taken the position they would not issue a will serve. Maybe it was elsewhere. It was one of the local districts. Um, all of us are being mindful of the fact that we can't keep get, giving out these well served letters. So I agree that we should be very mindful. Do we coordinate well? Yes. The business community works very well with us. We, can, we coordinate well with other water districts. We meet, uh, Tom and I meet uh, every other month with Riverside. Uh, we have committees that meet with all of the major entities in our, within our district to coordinate and work on water problems together. So yes, we do coordinate well. Yes, we all do understand the problems. Thank you. And I think it'd be nice to stop. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Evans, please. Thank you. We tend to talk in jargon sometimes. RCOG stands for the Western Riverside Council of Governments, includes the county. Two members of the Board of Supervisors are on there, so it actually does include everybody in the, in the Western Riverside County. Um, and um, through RCOG and through the county, we developed the first water uh, improved water use efficiency ordinance that was passed by first the county of Riverside to develop uh, and expect more efficient use of water in, in, in new developments. Through that process, working with the cities, the cities have developed, have adopted or modified ordinances they might have already had, including the city of Riverside. So it was a very effective method of, of commun communication and, and sort of clarifying this particular uh, particular issue. Um, kind of tag, tag on with what Charlie said about the uh, well served letters. We, we, by state law, you have to issue what's called a water supply assessment, which says you can supply enough water for that development for 20 years and not take water away from anybody else. In the process of issuing those, we require the developer to come back to us and say, what are you doing to reduce water? In the newest development we've had here recently, the March Life Care uh, Campus, or which, whatever term you want to use, the new development, hospital development at the uh, March Joint Powers Authority, they're using reclaimed water, they're using uh, more efficient uh, uh, appliances in interior and exterior, so they could use a very small amount of drinking water for that development. And so by working with these ordinances and being sure they're by being efficient, you can, in fact, do both accommodate growth, and also make sure there's enough for the local residents. Thank you. Ms. Denstead. Uh, land use. I think it's been a very positive experience for everyone being on the WRCOM, which is the Western Riverside Council of Governments, as uh, Tom just said. We have been able to work with all of the cities. The water agencies have come in and done very large presentations so that they understand the overall picture we bring to them, what information we're gathering from Sacramento, what's coming down the pipe, what's happening at Metropolitan, which we are a member agency of, so that they can plan and look out into the future. Cities have a big problem with future planning. They tend to look at the near future, whereas water districts tend to plan out in the long run for very longer periods of times. Most of our projects take that amount of time in order to put into place and guarantee for their use at later dates. So we try to do a lot of anticipation and working with our cities is key to that. I myself have met with not only our other agencies who work with the cities, but I go and meet with city officials regularly and our city council members with Marietta, Temecula, Elsinore, Canyon Lake, Wildemar, and we talk about what it means to them with projects coming down, what they can expect from us, how much reliability they can get, and what the future may hold so that they can do their appropriate planning. Every five years, the cities are required to go through a general plan advisory updates and their zoning requirements. And one of those has been my platform that I went and did speeches at the cities to say, I hope you're including your water agencies in those conversations. Your water agencies are going to bring the information to your table so that you can appropriately plan your areas and where your developments will occur. So that has been a very big tool for me. It's worked very well for the cities. I've helped them a number of times. I know staff has helped them out, and I know that Charlie and Tom spend a lot of time up here in the Riverside area helping those folks out. So that's uh, how I've handled that in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pena, please. Yes, um, land use. I'll be very, very honest with you, that's uh, not one of my top subjects. But, uh, one thing that is very important, and I know that it's very important, is the drainage. Uh, once cities have zoned a certain area uh, and given it a certain type of zoning, uh, there is drainage that is a problem and will co contaminate other waters. So it's very important that any district have uh, good engineering staff. Uh, you really need good engineering staff, believe me, to ensure that the development that's going on isn't going to conflict or uh, bring in, especially during the rainy seasons, um, excessive contaminants into the drinking water system or in, down into other residential areas. So that is very important. 
Also, what's very, very important is that uh, any agency within a, a city, uh, as us, but that we are, I think, two cities that are surrounding us, uh, two or three cities, uh, we have to ensure that we're working with, uh, with their staff members in a very, very cooperative type of environment to ensure that uh, we explain to them uh, the, the dangers, the problems that may occur. And, uh, you know, I believe most of the time everybody works in a cooperative manner and says, yeah, you're right, maybe we need to uh, zone this differently so, so that things work out better. Right. Thank you.